What do you like about reading, Andrew? I'm really into books on tape now, like mm-hmm. Audible. Uh, and I listen to it on like two, two and a half times speed. Just fast enough I can get through it really quickly. Okay. But not fast enough that it sounds like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Because you know that's pleasant to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks reminds me of Christmas songs because of their Christmas album. Which should be burnt and destroyed. And is in no way related to this week's podcast, is it? <laughs> not even slightly. <laughs> Welcome to the Goldilocks and the Three Cares podcast, where we take a look at a self-published work with what's too hot, what's too cold, and what's just right. I'm Andrew. And I'm Crystal. Just right about what, though? Just right about everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss my line? <laughs> yes. Too hot, too cold, and just right. Porridge. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's where we got the idea from. <laughs> Little girl, thieving porridge. <laughs> All right? <laughs> We're like a minute in. You already have the giggles. Mm. This is going to go well. I think so, yes. What book did we read this week? We read Seeds of Discovery, Duskgate Chronicles Book 1 by Brianna Patroff. And uh, what's this book about? It is about a 17-year-old girl who... Uh, discovers a gate that takes her to a different world, one that she is drawn to, and the book takes us through her journey in this new world. That's kind of a familiar theme. What's a little bit different about this book than, say, others with the whole 17-year-old girl portal? As we tape this, uh, Tomorrowland is coming out this week, I think? Something like that. Yeah. So, uh, So to answer your question, if I can get the words out, uh, the difference here is that there's actually some logistics with this gate in that it is not open open all the time. It's open at dusk, hence dusk gate, and it's only open every 10 days in the other world, but only a day goes by in our oh. world. Oh. Yeah. So that, that's interesting the way you can play with time like that. Exactly. And who's the main character? The main character, her name is Quinn. Okay. And again, 17-year-old girl um, sort of is at the bottom of the totem pole at her school. She's got a couple of friends, but she's by no means popular. And uh, she finds herself drawn to William, who uh, doesn't seem to be all he appears to be. And he happens to be a prince in this other world, and she follows him through the gate, and that's how she ends up in in the other world. And what's kind of the adventure that they go on? The adventure is, uh, it kind of leads into my two hot. Okay. In that the adventure is a bit predictable. Um, The... There's problems in this new world with uh, who's going to be the next king, who's going to be appointed the next king, as well as some medical uh, issues. All of the children in the villages are getting sick, and they're not sure why. Okay, so it's kind of two plot lines, political intrigue, but then also kind of an urgency driver with the children. Right, and I found it a bit predictable, A, in that it's a very, those two things are super common in these types of books. Yeah. And I also just felt like the the items in the plot set it up exactly so that it happened and played out exactly as I expected it to. And when you're reading something that's predictable, what is that, what kind of, like, I like to guess ahead, and I like to try to to figure out what where the author is trying to go, but I don't, I want just a light dusting of breadcrumbs to kind of try to figure it out on my own. I don't want it to be like, I got that, like this. this. Yeah, and it felt like a heavy loaf of bread being dropped you know every five feet at least that's how i i interpreted it because personally for me i enjoy reading a book that's more i see all these pieces yeah and then it's like well how the heck are these all gonna fit together i have like you're trying and to figure it out and if you do guess it you're like oh that's really satisfying Mm -hmm. um but in this book there weren't as many layers or as many threads it was a very linear sort of of plot which just it was really obvious the different points at least to me um where the book was heading and what was too cold what was there just not enough of the the book, actually. I don't know how else to, uh, okay. to to describe it because I feel like we basically end the book where we started from 
except we now know that there's a new world that, or a different world that Quinn can go to or that she knows about. Okay. Um, because so she discovers this world really late, or how does that kind of all fit in? It, it does. I mean, we, we spend a lot of the first, almost the first half of the book, giving backstory into her life as it is in the real world, which is great for developing context and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But then we go into this new world, spend a little bit of time there, and then the 10 days are up, and then we go back into oh, so the only, new world. There's only one cycle. Right. So it's 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 basically we solve a simple, or you know, we solve one problem, and then we go back into the new world, and then it's almost as if nothing has actually happened. So I'm, I'm not sure how else to describe it, but it just felt like we were led on this path and I was expecting something, um, a little more to happen, a little, yeah. you know, and it, it felt like I was guessing everything that was going to happen and I was waiting for that, aha, oh, this is, this is going to lead into the rest of the series moment, but I didn't get that. It didn't kind of draw you in and. I, for me, that when, when I hear you say that, the shame is I love that that Sophie's choice of if I go into this world, I'm going to spend 10 days there, but I'm going to spend one day on the outside. Like, there's a lot that you can do with that. Exactly. I think a really good example, the movie Inception, where they have to go down to a place where time is warped and... They spend like an hour down there, but 25 years goes by outside of of the planet. Right. And so, you know, something happens. It's kind of urgent. You get back and suddenly they're surrounded by old people because it's been 25 years, right? Like when you have that one to 10 time ratio, setting that up means you have to do something with it. And I think, you know, this is book one, as uh, I mentioned earlier. So I do think that the plan is to eventually do something. It just felt like this was almost a... Um, a prelude or a um, what's the word that is escaping like me? Like a prologue, kind a of a prologue. Thing? Yeah, but it was just a book as opposed to a chapter. And I just wish, you know, having not read the the upcoming books, I I would prefer a deep dive right off the bat and a thicker first book. Um, and I mean, it is set up really. It's an intriguing world, mm -hmm. uh, and that's sort of my my just right, which we'll get just get to. But it, you're, you're it jumping really, the gun on me. I today. know. I'm. I'm you're really excited. Here. I am. I am. I guess you want me to read the next book so that you can. <laughs> so do that. I can ask <laughs> you what was all just right, questions. Andrew? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it was fantabulous. Well, what was just right with this book? What I what did, did really like the concept, as yeah. you said. It, you can do a lot of cool things with it, and. You know, as this is the first book, um, and it does seem to just be sort of a setup for the rest of the series. Uh, and I mean, it was really well written. Um, so, you know, there was no problem with with the, you know, grammar and sentence structure and all that kind of stuff. It was a solid, you know, first book. Um, the I really hope that in the next books, the concept of the 10 days gets played with a lot yeah. more. Explore the world that you've built. Exactly. And, and uh, there were cool details in the world, you know, the uh, William, the prince and his siblings or some of his siblings, they have these birds that they have like a connection with. And mm -hmm. um, there's a cool twist on that. Um, you know, William is coming to our world because they, they lack um, medicine and the technology mm -hmm. for medicine and healthcare, And so he's learning everything he can to take it back to his world so there's a lot of cool things that can be done with those concepts yeah and uh it's sort of you know again i want to see more in the first book but we'll have to see in the other books now it's interesting you should talk about the world building because you know as as a writer yourself you have to do some world building uh places that you know that exist and, yeah, and kind of report on that and places that you have to make up as a writer can you world build a place that you don't love i think the question rather is i'm not sure if you would even write about something that you didn't love you but dante like... wrote inferno right like i'm not i'm pretty sure he didn't love all those rings of hell or did he 
Did he, did he love that story? Did he love that place? Did he love the feeling of I think you really need to see the place. Okay. I think... What do you mean by that? That you can't write a different world if you don't actually see it in your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you don't actually know exactly what it looks like, you might hate it, but you can see something that you hate. There's something about it that gives you that reaction, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to, uh, I, you know actually hating writing down the words because that's something completely <laughs> completely different but i think you need to visualize and see the world that your characters are going to be living in and then your emotion can come from that the reason why i asked is because brianna clearly loves the world that she built and she's setting it up for future books obviously or not obviously but hopefully so she spends much more time there. I was just really curious as to your take on that. That's my opinion on it. <laughs> Can I have an opinion on it? You can. You have to hate everything you write because Good. that's what I've learned. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what all the scrap I've, I've was in the, of, the garbage? With a ton of writers and they're always like, my work sucks. So anyways, anyways. That was Seeds of Discovery, which was Duskgate Chronicles, book one by Brianna Putroff. Where can we find this book? This book is on Amazon and Goodreads. And who do you recommend reads this type of book? I recommend this is for uh, a true young adult. Um, if you like adventure, if you like new worlds, if you like books that build into the rest of the series, then I would recommend this book. Yeah, you got to keep going with this one, right? Yeah, for sure. And speaking about keep going, where can you keep going to find us? We are on yes. iTunes. Mm-hmm. Goldilocks and the Three Cares. Yes. Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's temp. Keep going. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> everything's temporary. www.everythingstemporary.com. And I think that's the end of that. That's list. about it, which means it's about the end of us, isn't it? Yes. So please, if you like what you heard today, folks, subscribe, share, tell a friend. Uh, we talked about the sky riding planes. Hasn't happened yet. Still looking <laughs> for it. Send us a picture. Twitter us. Tweet us? Tweet us? Wow, you just <laughs> aged yourself. <laughs> Use the Twitter machine. Send us a tweet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. I'm Andrew. And I'm Crystal. Until next time, keep reading. Before we start, can I tell you a story? Always. <laughs> so, when I was little, my sisters and I listened to, like, these children's Bible stories on tape. Okay. But one day, the the battery was dying, but we didn't know. So it started slowing down the voice <laughs> so, until it was like... And we thought there was a ghost in the recording machine. <laughs>